The Gospel Bridge has been rebuilt, but secretly and silently, the forces of sin are at work to corrupt its strength and compromise its purpose. The bridge was created to cross the awful chasm that separated man from God. But watchful diligence is necessary to ensure the safety of all who hear the call to cross over. Like leaven working through a lump of dough, sin will try to gain access to the bridge. And if allowed to do its work, instead of a strong and sturdy structure, the gospel bridge will once again become worn and weakened. Just as leaven changes the character of everything it touches, so sin has a corrosive influence on everything it enters. We invite you to join with us as we respond to God's call to holiness, living leaven free. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 9 in your Bible. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 9 in your Bible. And I want you to say these words with me, and I want you to sound them so that they resound in the pavilions of heaven. I want you to shout with me from the bottom of a spirit that has been convinced. Get the leaven out. Shout it. Get the leaven out. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 9 records these words. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. One small pinch of leaven will infuse itself into an entire batch of dough. One small spot of rust can compromise the strength of an entire bridge. One small point of false doctrine can cancel the testimony of an entire church. Now from ancient times, leaven has been an illustration of sin. Every year in the days leading up to the Jewish feast of Passover, the head of every household was commanded by God to thoroughly search his home and to remove any trace of leaven. This, of course, was a picture of God's expectation of the believer's life lived in holiness before his throne. God today no longer requires us to look for natural leaven, but to search out and to remove any sin that would attempt to beset us and compromise our ability to live lives of cultural incorrectness to become agents of redemptive change. Now, last week, we rebuilt the old gospel bridge But now its sturdy planks must be protected from the insidious and subtle effects of sin. You're aware, I'm sure, that sin never announces itself. Sin never announces its intentions. Sin never approaches you shouting, Hello, I'm sin, and I've come to destroy your life. Rather, sin works slowly. Sin works in a very sinister and subtle fashion. Just like rust in a bridge's sturdy beam, the corrupting influence of sin will show up at the time of greatest stress and the time of greatest strain, causing ultimate collapse and calamity. It's time. I need somebody to join me this morning and shout, it's time. We've had enough, enough is enough, it's time. Enough is enough, it's time. Enough is enough, it's time. It's time to get the sin out, it's time to get the leaven out. It's time to get the leaven out of our minds. I wish I had half a church. It's time to get the leaven out of our bedrooms. It's time to get the leaven out of our thinking process. It's time to get the leaven out of the pew. It's time to get the leaven out of the pulpit. It's time to get the leaven out of the deacon, out of the elder, out of the sister, out of the brother. And God only knows it's time to get the leaven out of the preachers. I can't get no help. I'm going to do my best to share with you 
five different forms of leaven that attempt to creep into your life that have crept into the church so that those that would make their way from sin's bondage all the way to the blessing of the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ find weakened beams. They fall through helplessly and hopelessly because what looks strong, just like those bridges, just like the silver bridge, just like the bridge over the Mississippi River, everyone went across unsuspecting that a one tenth of an inch crack in one of those mighty support beams would bring everything upon that bridge to wreck and ruin and you sit here today and the pews look nice and the crystal chandeliers look nice and the songs are pretty and the light show was great and our suits are well pressed and our dresses look right and we've got our hair done just right and we may not be aware that working subtly working deeply will underneath the surface there are already cracks of the erosive power of sin and leaven that have weakened the church to the point that when it is most laden with souls trying to get into the kingdom they plunge 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 to their fiery depths while no one suspects Now, this one may not make you shout and jump over the pew, but it will save your life, not only temporally, but in the vast, everlasting reaches of eternity. Job said, when I consider him, I fear him. I know you want to shout. I know you want to jump. I know you want to dance. But I will remind you in the sacred moment, a little leaven leavens the whole lump. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Somebody just shove your neighbor on the shoulder very sincerely say I'm about to get the leaven out I'm just about to get the leaven out there must be some reason that my prayers go unanswered there must be some reason that while others are searching to make ends meet I can't even find the ends there must be some reason why I don't possess joy unspeakable and full of glory there must be a reason that I don't wake up with a hallelujah and go to bed with a thank you Jesus there must be some reason for this struggle. There must be some reason for this fight. There must be some reason while others are shouting and I feel like crying. There must be a reason why my children are as yet unsaved. There must be a reason why I can't seem to receive and maintain my healing. There must be a reason that I'm always down and never up. The first form of leaven that may be attacking your life is the leaven of the Pharisees. Ah, oh, they pray long prayers. Their preacher is superpowered and their program is always new. They got Hollywood entertainers light shows, Nashville has-beens, 
Motown never was. <laughs> Give me some black skin because that's pretty good. Okay, I'll make it back into preacher mode here. Hey! Uh, huh? Go ahead. That's pretty good preaching. Yes, it is. Never fell. Something's wrong. No, something's wrong. Something is not right. The Pharisees. <laughs> Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. Now, folk think I preach hard. Some even call me unkind and unsensitive. Here, the mightiest preacher of the ages, Jesus. Hear him shout, beware, take heed of the leaven of the Pharisees. The Pharisees, of course, were more committed and concerned regarding their outward appearance and their show of religiosity than they were with their inward character. They look good on the outside, but dead men's bones on the inside. Matthew 23, hear the words of Jesus, Woe unto you Pharisees, you hypocrites! You're not shouting. I'm going to make this a series. I need to, everybody on TBN and the New Inspirational Network and Daystar and the Word Network and all the rest, get ready. I'm going to preach like Jesus. You hypocrites. I said it smiling. You Hip, you whited sepulchers, whitewashed buildings. How'd you like that series? How would that sell? Ten steps to reveal your hypocrisy. Seven ways to uncover why you're such a liar. Well, they're lining up to get that one. That's going to be a New York Times bestseller. I promise you that right now. He said, listen, this is the preaching of Jesus. You hypocrites, you tithe, you give 10% of your mint, your deal, your cumin, but you neglect the more important matters of the law, justice and mercy and faithfulness. You blind guides. You strain out a gnat and swallow a camel. You clean the outside of the cup and the dish, but the inside are full of greed, full of selfishness. First clean the inside of the cup and the dish, and then the outside also will be clean. You are like whitewashed tombs, which look beautiful on the outside, but on the inside are full of dead men's bones and everything unclean. In the same way, on the outside, you appear to be people of righteousness, but on the inside, 
You're full of hypocrisy and wickedness. Four times in that passage of Scripture, Jesus Christ, the ultimate example, looks at those Pharisees and says, you are hypocrites. That's not real user-friendly. You know, you can take a woman, you can pluck it out, paint it in, puff it up, powder it up, pull it up, snip it off, sew it back. You can put her in a $5,000 mink stole, slide her down into the Corinthian leather, in a Mercedes Benz. You can put diamonds on every finger and rubies on every toe. You can squirt $500 an ounce perfume all over her body. But I have to tell you something. Inside, she is still nothing more than dirty, rotten, stinking, sinful flesh. We must again begin to preach the true gospel, the real gospel. And that is that man is fallen, that man is depraved, that man is wicked, that man is sinful, that man is unrighteous, that man is separated from God. But thanks be to God, though the wages of sin is death the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ my Lord I've got to shout it Wendell what can wash away my sin nothing but the blood of Jesus what can make me whole again nothing but the blood of Jesus I refuse to be a part of a bunch that have a form of godliness but deny the power thereof Jude says they are clouds, but they don't have any rain. My eastern Kentucky daddy would say it this way. They like to wear a big cowboy hat, but they ain't got no cattle. I can't hear nobody shouting in here. They like to drill a big hole, but use somebody else's auger. They got a big truck, but it's owned by somebody else. You're not listening to me right now. We have had highway piracy of the power of God. We have traded in the demonstration of the glory of God for entertainment put on by Latin, Las Vegas style entertainers selected with scrutiny by a backslidden church board. I'm here today to announce, let's get the leaven out. <laughs> Trees without any fruit, doubly dead, plucked up by the roots. We ought to demand more. I can't get no shouts. We ought to demand more. We ought to demand something of leadership. We ought to demand an anointing. We ought to say, I don't care what kind of three-part harmony you can portray on a pulpit. I don't feel any anointing. I'm about to lay this mic down and go to running. We ought to demand more. We ought to demand that somebody takes a Bible in one hand and a microphone in the other, declares what God says to say to who God says to say it, and then close that book, walk off that platform, and care less what anybody thinks about it. We need somebody coming out of the wilderness, eating locusts and wild honey, and declaring, this is the way of the Lord. Walk ye in it. I'm going to see how you shout and clap here in a minute. It's always good to shout against the preacher. But here just in a minute, I'm going to snuggle right up here in the pew beside you. Well, I'm about to make an announcement. I want every dead church to know. I want every backslidden preacher to know. I want every deacon, every elder, every lay leader, every bishop, every bishop of what? I want it. I want every so-called preacher that can't turn off the pornography on the internet. I want every backslidden deacon slapping his wife around. I want every teenager. Putting their hands on what don't belong to them. I'm about to preach up in here. 
I said, I'm about to preach up in here. Yay! Yeah, yes! You gotta help me a little bit. Because I need to say this. I'm about to say a thing right up in here. You ready? Are you ready? I have no more need for your Pentecostal religion. I just said that right up in here. Your charismaniac, ma char what is it? Charismaniac. Char charismaniac, cares. Your charismatic religion. Oh, Brother Rod, we're not religious. You're a liar. Hypocrite! We don't post our order of service. You don't have to. Everybody knows it. We don't give you a handout when you come through the door saying what we're going to do. You don't have to. It's memorized. We got a memorized shout, a taught tongue, and a learned dance. A memorized shout. We got a taught tongue. We got to learn dance. We know when to buck. We know when to polish our shoes. We know when to dance. We know when to run the aisles. But inside, we are full of dead men's bones. Let me tell you what you're going to do. You're going to sing a fast song. Then you're going to sing a slow song. Then somebody's going to prophesy. Then you're going to tell us Luke 6, 38. Give it, it shall be given unto you. Good man, heaped up your and shake together. Run over there. Help us. Where's the power? Where's the glory? Where's the manifestation? Where are the dead raised to life again? Where are the new tongues? Where are the tongues of men and angels? Where is the glory? Where is the presence? Where is the power? I have no more need for your Pentecostal religion. Religion, religion, religion than I do a Shinto shrine, a Hindu cow, or a New Age crystal. Religion is religion. I don't care what you put up over the door. You may be the church of God. You may be the church of God in Christ. You may be the church of God in Christ of the second advent, of the third revelation, of the fourth movement of God, of the holy sons, of the eternal God of justice. I don't know who you are. I don't care what's up over your door. I don't care what you want to service. I don't care what your order of service in. Here's, here's, here's what I want to know. Are lives being changed? Are yokes being destroyed? Are burdens being lifted? Somebody shout. Number two. Shout, get the leaven out. I want to talk about the leaven of the Sadducees. They are so sad, you see. Here's why they are sad. They deny the supernatural power of God. I wish I had strength to stand up on this old gospel bridge and shout to you what I want to shout. I still believe in miracles. I thought you all helped me a little bit. I believe in miracles. I still believe in a wet water walking Jesus. I still believe in a blind man healing Jesus. I still believe in a leper cleansing man from Galilee. They don't believe and much of anything. They don't believe in angels. Now the problem with that is if you don't believe in angels, chances are pretty good you don't believe in that third of them that fell. I just knocked that one out of the park and you all didn't even notice. I said, 
If you don't believe in angels, you don't believe in demons. How you how you gonna how you gonna believe? This has nothing to do with you, Wendell. How you gonna believe in demons when you paying them to sit on the organ in their pants that are entirely too tight and their wrists that are entirely too limp and they've been messing around with little boys in your congregation and you know about it? I'm gonna preach till somebody just grunts. about to run across my bridge right now holiness holiness unto the Lord now and forever they didn't believe in eternity they didn't believe in heaven they didn't believe in hell I'm here to tell you today whether you believe it or not doesn't change one thing heaven is still real streets are still made out of gold the lamb of god is still the light of that city and just as real as hell a place where the worm never dies a place where men gnaw their tongues for pain a place where the fire is never quenched hell is a reality heaven is a reality i don't care what your backslidden preacher slick haired and shiny shoot as he may be i don't care what he told you father sanctify them through your truth your word is truth give God praise just for a minute they didn't believe in the Holy Ghost I'm gonna tell you again they didn't believe in the Holy Ghost and not speaking in tongues Yeah. Quiet up in here. Well, I just don't believe that's necessary. Thank you, Dr. Dumbbell. <laughs> Sister, yay, 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 yay. What do you do with Acts chapter 1 and Acts chapter 2? Give me your Bible. Can you just take it? Don't believe in that part. <laughs> Acts chapter one. Nope. Preach. Preach. How about uh, Acts chapter two? Don't need that. Holiness. Be the husband of one wife. Whoa, better not have that one. Submit yourself unto your husband as unto the Lord. Oh, don't need that one. Pay your tithe. I don't think so. Stop it. Stop it. Put it back. Because that's what I want to tell America. I still got a Bible. Every page, every line, every word, I still believe you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you. I still believe in power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. Power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Oh, there is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood blood of the lamb power over sin power over sickness power 
over Satan, power over demons, power over depravity, power over... Well, let's see. Let me see here. How about, uh, let's see here. Uh, let's get over here to the R's. Uh, rapture. Resurrection. Return of Christ. You whited sepulchers, hypocrites. Here's what your Bible said. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, declared to be the Son of God with power by the resurrection of the dead. Y'all going to preach me down? He lives. He lives. I need a witness. He lives. He lives. He once was dead. He lives. They put him in a borrow tomb. He got up. First Thessalonians chapter 4. Uh, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven. Not like the church. He laid down with a shout. He got up with a shout. He's coming back with a shout. I ain't got nobody to bear witness. I ain't got nobody that still believes. Two shall be grinding at the mill. One shall be taken. One shall be left. Two shall be asleep in the bed. The wife who went to bed with a prayer and a shout of victory in her heart and her husband who waited until she went to sleep and went and got on the computer or the telephone to somebody that's not his wife. But I wore a good suit. I could sing. I could preach. I could run. I could shout. I could dance. You're lost. But I said I was sorry. No, you didn't. And besides that, God is not moved by your apology. God is moved by repentance. And you know what repentance is? Repentance is you act like a man, walk like a man, talk like a man, go in front of other men and confess your sin. We might as well just throw the whole thing away. My Bible says he's coming back with a shout, with a shout. Now, I'm sorry if you've lost yours, but he didn't lose his. He's coming back with a shout. If you can shout at a touchdown, you better shout about a resurrection. <laughs> shout for me, Wendell, I can't shout. <laughs> It's true. Let America know everybody's not backslidden. Hallelujah. <laughs> Trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. We which are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Hallelujah. 
And then, after we're out of here for seven years, he's coming back again. Riding on a white horse. Turning around and hollering, Parsley, get on your own horse. He's coming back. His foot's going to touch on the Mount of Olives. It's going to cleave asunder. Fresh water's, water's going to flow out of there, down through the Kidron Valley, splash against the Dead Sea, break it wide open, and fresh water is going to run where bitter was. Blood's going to run bridle deep to a horse in the Valley of Megiddo. He's going to go down through the Kidron Valley, up through the Eastern Gate, and he's going to sit down on a throne and rule and reign for a thousand years shout is coming get the leaven out get the leaven out get the leaven out I gotta say this I gotta say this right here I gotta say this right here ah Jesus I feel my help coming you need to not be concerned about what you see around you that Bible we threw away still says hmm, before that day comes a great falling away hmm, falling away that day will not come unless there's a falling away we are living in a day when the cold are getting colder ah, Jesus but somebody ought to get ready to shout up in here because at the same time the cold are getting colder, <laughs> the hot are getting hotter. Some of us are no longer saying how close to the world can we get and still be saved. Some of us are saying how close to God can we get and still be on this planet. I wish somebody shout. Four. Are we on three? Are we on three? We better hurry. The leaven of Herod. Take heed. Beware of the leaven of Herod. Three characteristics found in 1 John. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. The lust of the flesh. The lust of the eyes, the pride of life is not of the Father, but of this world. Herod exemplified it. The story is found over in Matthew chapter 14. Herod had John the Baptist killed because John preached against him taking his brother Philip's wife. So, King Herod went to the internet, <laughs> pulled up, Hustler. Let a dancing girl, 14 years of age, dance before him. Went into his cupboard, got some Mogan David Concord grape, drank his fill. He watched that little girl dance before him. Her mother said, I want you to give her whatever she asked for. Herod said, in that drunken, erotic stupor, I'll give you whatever you want up to half my kingdom. You make real dumb mistakes when your mind is clouded 
by alcohol and drugs and when you are in some kind of pornographically induced thought process. So he said, bring me John the Baptist's head on a silver chart. That kind of leaven fills the contemporary culture. If you don't believe it, let me give you some examples. How about greed? Would you say it? greed? How about those adjustable mortgage rates? Remember those? About a third of you got one. I'm talking to you now talking to you about greed. Greed on the part of the lenders, greed on the part of the borrowers. Always trying to finance a lifestyle that you cannot afford through the deception of credit. $850 billion is out right now. Home mortgage failures have increased three times over in the last two years because greedy lenders enticed you with a lie and because you're so busy trying to keep up with the Joneses or Lawanda you just had to have one and now you can't pay your mortgage. How about gambling? Want to talk a little bit about gambling? Let's talk about that. It gets real quiet when I talk about gambling because about a third of you got lottery tickets in your pocket right now. <laughs> Every state loses $3 in bankruptcies and crime. They lose $3 for every dollar of income from state-run lotteries. How come nobody tells you that? Because we're dumb sheep led to the slaughter. And nobody listening to me. Every gambling addict, and with which there are 10 million of in the United States of America, 10 million, every one of them cost the state $13,000 in social programs to cover their addictions that the state is sponsoring. Now, for those of you with the lottery ticket in your pocket. <laughs> Let me tell you why God does not support the lottery. Are you ready? Do you know that 90% of lottery tickets are purchased by those living below the poverty line? Over 90%. Do you know why it's wrong? Because God never promised you something for nothing. Okay, don't shout me down now. God never promised you something for nothing. God said by the strength of your brain and the brawn of your back, you would labor and earn a living. God didn't promise you something for nothing. Now I'm going to give you the statistics. The chance of you run, winning the lottery with that ticket in your pocket right now are one in 146 million. So let me tell you how you can win. You ready? I'm going to give you the formula right now for everybody in this building to win the lottery. Ready? Here's it. You can win it. Why aren't you writing? I'm going to give you the formula right now how to win the lottery. You only need to buy 50 tickets a week for the next 45,000 years. And after 45,000 years of you buying 50 tickets a week, that 50th ticket is a winner. How stupid must we be? How foolish 
how caught up in the spirit of greed must we be? We got children. Average age is 11. The average age is 11 of children that are being abducted into the illicit sex trade industry in the United States of America. Not, not, in, not in Taiwan, on Main Street, USA. Huh? Led into lives of prostitution. Eaten up with sexually transmitted diseases. My good friend Natalie Grant got involved in fighting the illicit sex trade industry in the United States of America when a 14-year-old girl three doors down from her Nashville home was abducted and sold into the sex trade industry in the United States of America. It's happening three doors down from you. We are so caught up in the media, in the internet, in pornography, in my space. Facebook. Well, they, they're, they're trying. To, they're like, I hope his eyes don't catch mine. <laughs> Sometimes I get on there just to see what you're doing. What? Sometimes I get, I'm telling you the truth. Sometimes I get on there, and when I get on your MySpace, I'm two clicks away from one of your friends telling me how they enjoy lesbianism and homosexuality. Is that what you want to be identified with? Huh? How come they're not shouting? How come they're not jumping over the pews right now? How come they're not bucking and running and rejoicing? I'll tell you why. It's this ungodly affluence. We have been so caught up in the spirit of Herod that we don't know how to get loose. This emphasis. I'm going to preach. This emphasis on beauty, you Pharisees. This emphasis on beauties, on beauty and body. Some of you spend more time putting on your makeup than in the Bible. Come on now. Don't shout me down. We got a husband. We got wives scared to death they're going to lose their husband. There is nothing more belittling. There is nothing more horribly, more horribly self-destructive than running after some boy or man as if you had to do something to catch him or keep him. Kick his sorry self to the curb. If you gotta go spend five grand aside for your double D's to keep him, would you kick him to the curb? said it oh it's quiet up in here in this church where we've thrown the Bible away Ooh. shout get the leaven out I don't know where am I number four here's the Bible answer to the spirit of the world come out from among them and be ye separate says the Lord of hosts, and I touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. I don't think you can handle number four, so let's just skip it. Four is the leaven of the Corinthians, which is twofold. Number one, malice. Number two, rejection of spiritual authority. Like I said, you want me to blow right past number four. We do not need to spend any time there. Do you know that thoughts are forerunners to deeds? Do you know you always thought it before you did it? 
Those people that say, well, I did it, but it, that's just not like me. Everybody knows it's just like you, but you. Evil thought life. I had a friend named Ron DePriest. He was a good man to be friends with. Six foot six, 320 pounds, tattoos in places you didn't know there were places. Rode a Harley flathead, chains all over him. He was in a bar. Somebody accidentally bumped him. So he just said to his partner, hold my drink, walked into the bathroom, pulled out a 32 snub nose, shoved a man up against the wall, and took that 32 and blew both of his legs off at the kneecaps. Wiped the blood off his vest, put his 32 away, walked out of the bar, jumped on his flathead, rode down the road. He raped women, beat children, murdered men. And then he got saved. They put him in solitary confinement. He beat the walls until every bone in both hands was completely broken. And they froze that way because he couldn't get out of solitary confinement. When he came out, they put his hand on an anvil and took a ball-peen hammer and rebroke every one of those bones without painkillers. I'm talking about a man's man who got on his knees, gave his life to Jesus, and became the humblest mighty man I ever knew. And he said, you know the only difference between me and the Christians that attend your church? I did what they thought. Can I remind you of the words of Jesus? If a man looks upon a woman, oh, you don't like preaching like this. This is hard stuff, ain't it? This is hard stuff. If you want me to go on, you better, you better shout, get the leaven out. Because I'm, I'm about to lay this microphone down and quit. I'm about, I'm about to quit. I'm about to leave you right here. I'm about to leave you to your own demise. I'm about to not give you the answer. If a man looketh upon a woman to lust after her, he might as well have gone, got a hotel room, pulled down the covers, and had full-blown sexual relations with her. That's what your Bible says. Why is it so quiet? And it's not just talking about sexual sin. It's talking about you on the phone to somebody that's not your wife. Getting emotional support. Or whatever it is you want to lie and call it. This is what's destroying the church. This is why cripples don't run out of wheelchairs. This is why we can't seem to get our prayers answered. We need to get the leaven out. Number five, the leaven of the Galatians. Well, 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 you're trying to hurt me. I'm not going to leave that spiritual authority thing. Everybody always wants to submit till the person in leadership tells them what they don't want to hear. You want to come into my office may, having made a decision about who to marry and then ask me to bless it? Nope. This man right here, he said, I, I believe I'm supposed to work in the inner city. I graduated from Bible college. I, I think it's time I, I'm going to go out and start me a church. And I said, go ahead. He said, will you bless me? I said, nope. He said, well, what do I need to do? I said, go sit down. How long would you stay? I said, go sit down. He said, where? I said, on the front row. He said, for how long? I said, I don't know. He sat there for two years. Huh? Now we got three churches in there. Now we got three churches.
I'm going to put my child in Christian school. I'm going to put them over there where the Bible's taught and all that stuff till they get a pro, till they're old enough to be in a program that you're not able to have then. I'm going to take them and I'm going to put them over here. I know several families that did that. I can show you their children that turned into homosexuals and lesbians. Why are you not shouting? Oh, pastor, I've been blessed. I got a job opportunity in another city. Yeah, but your children are teenagers, and there's no great church there, and you're leaving the covering. I, you really ought to stay here because no raise is worth losing your family. I can show you that family. They got a big raise. They're now divorced. Their children are lost, and they're filed for bankruptcy. Now, am I saying that that's going to happen to you? I'm not saying that. I'm just telling you nothing is worth leaving the covering that God Almighty has placed over your life. And if you don't have one, please, would you get one? Thank you. Number five, the leaven of the Galatians. I like to preach about this one. It's leaven that denies the necessity of grace. It would say that you just need to be a good person. You just need to go to church. And if you wear your sleeves right and comb your hair right and do whatever the religious six-foot icicle moaning and groaning and messing about up there tells you, then you'll be saved. Now the problem with that is, here's the problem. We are not saved by works, lest any man should boast, but by grace. Grace. God's grace. Grace that can pardon. Grace that can cleanse. Come with me. Come with me to Pilate's parapet. The sun has not yet quite arisen on the darkest day of human infamy. See a figure standing there, scarcely recognizable as a human being. He's been beaten with the lictors, lashed until his flesh hangs round about his legs like ribbons. He has a cruel crown of thorns planted and piercing his bruised and swollen brow. His beard has been plucked out by the roots and his wounds are open to the flies and the filth of the streets. Pitiful sun beats down into his gaping wounds until it feels as though the very flames of hell have embedded themselves deeply within his flesh. They kick him. They prod him through the cobblestone streets of Jerusalem. They take him up to the brow of Golgotha, the place of the skull. They stretch him wide. They hang him high. Nails part sinew and flesh. His body is swung between heaven and earth. A precious drop of crimson blood courses down his forehead to his cheek and then to his chin. He lowers his head and lets it fall all the way past his bloody toes into pools of red swallowed by the sand. And every drop cries out, I'm doing this for you. When I survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died, my richest gain I count but loss and poor contempt on all my pride. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart rolled away, it was there by faith I received my sight and now I am happy. All the day. Weak and wounded sinner. Lost and left to die. Lift up your head. Love is passing by. 
just come to Jesus. Just come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus.